1914, a huge injustice occurred in our nation, an injustice that left a huge black mark on our nation's history, an injustice and tragedy that will ever serve as a reminder of the struggles and the challenges that immigrants have encountered in their hope for a better future in Canada. The incident, the injustice, and the tragedy that I speak of, Mr. Speaker, is the incident of the Kamagata Maru. On May 23, 1914, the Kamagata Maru, a passenger ship, arrived in Vancouver at the Burrard Inlet with 376 passengers from India. On board, 340 Sikhs, 12 Hindus, and 24 Muslims. Many of them had fought alongside the British in wars and given their lives for the Commonwealth. They were British citizens coming to a Commonwealth country, yet upon their arrival, they were horrified to learn that with, they would be denied the opportunity to disembark and enter Canada. The grounds, Canada's immigration laws, exclusionary, discriminatory, and racist, passed in the 1900s and designed to select immigrants based on race and country of origin. Legislation was passed, Mr. Speaker, which stated that to be admitted to Canada, immigrants were required to come by a continuous journey from their country of birth and were required to have at least $200. Even though the continuous journey regulation didn't mention race, didn't mention nationality, it was indeed an open secret that the regulation was to be applied and to be intended for those coming from India or China. Hence, Canadian authorities didn't permit these passengers on the Kamagata Maru to leave the boat. For two months, these passengers lived in prison-like conditions with little food or little water. They lived in conditions of famine, of starvation, and of disease. The Indo-Canadian community at that time, in particular those from the Khalsa Dewan Society, struggled to assist them and to fruitlessly negotiate on their behalf for them to be able to stay in Canada. And unfortunately, despite their efforts, despite their struggles, at the end of the two months, only 24 passengers were given permission to stay in Canada. The rest, the rest were ordered, deported. And on July 23, 1914, the Canadian government of the day brought in the cruiser HMCS Rainbow, which aimed its guns at the Kamagata Maru and ordered for it to be escorted out of Canadian waters. Friends and supporters watched this bitter and horrific injustice as it was the first time that the Canadian Navy had used the ship for aggression. A journey that had begun on April 4, 1914 from India ended on September 29, 1914, when the Kamagata Maru returned to Calcutta, India. And upon return, some of the passengers were killed and others arrested. This tragedy, Mr. Speaker, is an injustice and serves to remind us of this dark chapter in our nation's history. 94 years later, this chapter still remains open. The Indo-Canadian community, nor those who were impacted or affected, have ever received an apology from the government for this mistake of the past. Many before me have raised this issue. Individuals from the Indo-Canadian community, municipal, provincial, and federal politicians, like the members from Newton North Delta, Bramley Gore Malton, people like Saib Thin of the Professor Mohan Singh Foundation, Sukhi Bad of Radio Punjab, and Mr. Gurvinder Dhaliwal of Radio Sherry Punjab, Radio India Maninder Gill and Gurpreet Singh, Kalwinder from Red FM. But despite their efforts, despite their persistence, an apology has yet to be received. And Mr. Speaker, some Canadians might ask, why this is important to raise nearly a century later. It is ironic that 90 years later, we once again have another Conservative government that is once again deciding to overhaul our immigration system, which would perhaps provide the minister with discretionary powers to pick and to choose who comes into our nation. And we only need to be reminded of the injustices of the past, injustices like the Kamagata Maru incident, or the time from 1885 to 1923 when there was a head tax for the Chinese, 
or the period from 1923 to 1945, where strict immigration rules prohibited the Jewish from entering our country. These are not proud moments for our nation's history. We must not, as a nation, go back to the politics of exclusion, of discrimination or racism.